Cooperative Extension Service, University of Maryland System presents Using Pesticides Safely, a six-part training series for registered technicians. examines how pesticides can contaminate our environment and how to avoid this. You'll learn procedures to follow in case of a pesticide spill. We'll show you three ways water can be contaminated. You'll learn what causes a pesticide to drift from its target site. And finally, we'll show you where to find information about how to avoid harming wildlife. Soil, air, and life on our planet are all in delicate balance. A spilled, overused, or misused pesticide can start a chain of events that knocks a system out of balance, leading to potentially disastrous consequences. Unfortunately, accidents happen. A pump hose bursts. A can of concentrate falls off a truck. Or a lid isn't properly secured. These examples are all spills, and a spill is a technician's biggest nightmare. When a spill happens, what do you do? Well, let's find out from an expert. Here's Pete Johnson, a specialist in toxic materials cleanup. Stop it, contain it, isolate it, clean it up, dispose of it, decontaminate the area. That's the essence of the whole process. The first three steps must be done fast by the person at the scene before people get hurt or the pesticide reaches a critical area, like a stream. So let's say a hose bursts off a spray rig and pesticide is pouring out on the ground. First, stop it. Turn off the pump, jam something in the hose. Of course, you have your safety equipment on. Second, contain it. Quickly build dikes to stop the spread of the spill chemical. Use dirt, kitty litter, rags, paper towels, commercial spill control products, whatever you have that'll soak it up. Third, isolate it. Keep people and pets out of the area. Use rope or tape to block it off. Once you've done all this, take time to call your office, the pesticide manufacturer, and if the spill is large, state officials for instructions on cleanup, disposal, and decontamination. Keep this in mind. By law, certain spills must be reported to the authorities. Whether you report a spill depends on the pesticide that was spilled, how much was spilled, the laws in your particular state. When in doubt, report it. We've just looked at your biggest nightmare, controlling a spill. But there are other dangers not so obvious, yet just as important to keeping our environment clean. Let's first talk about the ones that threaten our water. Surface water, like streams, ponds, and lakes, and groundwater, which supplies much of our drinking water. Groundwater is found in underground zones of rock, sand, or gravel, which can be contaminated by pesticides seeping or leaching down. Once contaminated, groundwater is difficult or impossible to clean. Direct pollution of water can occur when a sprayer is filled near the bank of a stream or pond. Overfill the tank, the spray mix spills over, runs down the bank, and contaminates the water below. So never leave a sprayer unattended when you're filling it. Also, always use a backflow preventer if your fill hose is attached or enters the tank. A backflow preventer or check valve is simply an anti-siphoning device it prevents the spray mix in the tank from siphoning back down the fill hose. Without one, your entire tank of pesticide could siphon back into the water supply. Another way water gets polluted, and this happens far too often, is when someone dumps unwanted pesticide into storm drains or down toilets. They must think it simply disappears down there. It doesn't. Storm drains eventually lead to surface or groundwater. There are three good reasons why careless dumping of a pesticide should never be considered. First, because this could poison rivers, lakes, streams, and wells. Second, because it could kill someone. 
And third, you can go to jail. Another way of contaminating water is through runoff. That's when heavy rains, right after an application, wash the pesticide, or soil and sand containing pesticide residues, into storm drains, streams, and ponds. Remember, safe application means keeping the pesticide where it's supposed to be and making sure it doesn't go anywhere else. Well water can be contaminated from a pesticide applied too close and seeping down around a damaged casing. The government and the chemical manufacturers have strict rules about treating near wells. Now let's move from water to air pollution. Outdoors, we're basically talking about drift, the movement away from treatment sites of pesticides suspended in the air. Wind is a major factor, but not the only one. The smaller the particle size, the longer the pesticide will remain suspended in air, and the greater the risk of drift. ULV, or ultra-low volume sprays, have extremely small particle sizes, and so are most likely to drift. But other types of applications may also drift. So don't spray or dust outdoors on windy days. High temperatures can also increase drift. That's one of the reasons applications are often made early in the morning or after sunset. Now just in case you indoor applicators think this doesn't apply to you, air contamination can also happen indoors. If you're applying a pesticide in a room with poor ventilation, it may vaporize and remain suspended in the air and high-pressure application equipment produces extremely small droplets that ricochet into the air, contaminating the entire area. And then there's the applicator who simply applies too much pesticide for the area being treated. Water, air, and now to soil. When excessive or repeated applications of long-lasting pesticides are made, pesticide residues can build up. That's a significant problem that can cause illegally high pesticide residues in food crops. Also, residues may burn some plants. We've talked about the effects of pesticide residues on water, air, and soil, but what about animals and plants? Direct effects like bird, fish, or bee kills are nearly always caused by failure to follow the precautions on the label. Another example of a direct effect. Some products warn against application to certain kinds of plants because the pesticide can harm them. Indirect effects are more subtle, but nevertheless, they can be serious. For instance, the destruction of plants near a stream could reduce hiding and feeding areas for birds and small animals. It could also expose the stream banks to erosion. Another indirect effect is bioaccumulation. Wildlife feeding on animals or plants containing pesticide residues may store some in their own bodies. The levels may become more concentrated as other animals feed on the contaminated ones. A particular group of animals and plants deserves special mention. Endangered and threatened species which face extinction. They need special protection and they get it from laws and regulations enforced by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and by individual states. The penalty for killing even one member of an endangered species can be severe. So check the label for endangered species restrictions. Please remember that your first responsibility is to keep your pesticides from harming the environment or harming people. After watching this program, you should be able to answer a few key questions. The written answers to the questions are included in the video program package. If you can't answer correctly, review the program. Ready? Here goes. One, how should you clean up a pesticide spill? Two, what are three ways water can become contaminated with pesticides? Three, what is a backflow preventer? Four, what are three things that make a pesticide likely to drift? Five, where will you find information on pesticide use restrictions to protect endangered species?